they really are using that for eligibility, which HAVA doesn't permit. And uh, unlike um, Ohio, some states would only require ID if there's a non-match. In the state, in the case of Ohio, voter ID is required whether there's a match or a non-match. So we, we have these safeguards in place, and we also know that with voter ID, that provides a further safety net so that when the person appears to vote, uh, whether it's by absentee ballot or in person, they still have to pro provide identification even if there is a match with the state and federal databases that um, those identifying numbers are compared with. Um, one thing that um, we want to make very clear is that you're hearing a lot about voter fraud, but we need to really specify that because there's voter registration fraud, which uh, goes to some of the current controversy about ACORN. There is illegal voting, and then there is um, voter suppression or intimidation tactics that would interfere with the conduct of an election. So the question is, does voter registration fraud lead to illegal voting? Um, generally, no. Um, if you want to liken it to a baseball analogy, if first base is being registered to vote so that you can actually request a ballot, um, you can't steal first base. So essentially, there are a lot of safeguards and checks to keep a person from entering the, um, the pool of voters who could request a ballot. Um, there, obviously, you can steal second and third. We won't go into the rest of the analogies, but um, understanding that it's a very big hurdle for a person to overcome to actually make it on a registered voter list without being flagged or uh, without being marked. Um, there are safeguards to, to prevent other people's votes from being affected by a voter who either should not be voting or is voting too much or voting for someone else. Uh, so we're talking about eligibility, voting more than once, or voting about that you're not entitled to vote. Um, in terms of registration fraud, um, it, in, as far as leading to illegal voting, we can show, and you've got a copy of the report from the League of Women Voters and the Coalition on Homelessness, which I believe is in the left side of your packet, um, that indicates that between 2002 and the end of 2005, there were only four reported cases of illegal voting, which sometimes people refer to as voter fraud. Uh, just on some important facts to remember, um, voter suppression, and we've given you quite a few examples here in the press release. Um, voter suppression or intimidation uh, actually includes a number of things that um, are specifically set out in the revised code in Title 3599. Uh, for instance, it would be, um, it's specifically defined as corrupt practices so that if an employer threatens employees or informs employees that if a particular candidate is elected or defeated, work for that employer will cease, that actually is a violation that's considered to be voter intimidation or corrupt practice. Uh, employers are prohibited from making these or other threats that would be intended to influence the political opinions or votes of their employees. They're also not permitted to interfere with their employees on election days, such as firing them or threatening to fire them uh, when they're registered to vote and they take a reasonable amount of time to vote on election time or to serve as a poll worker. Um, employers cannot use force or restraint to threaten or inflict any injury uh, or in any manner intimidate an employee. Um, when I say injury, I also include harm and loss or intimidate an employee regarding elections or voting. And essentially, um, no person can interfere with the conduct of an election. They cannot impersonate an election official either in person or in writing. And you'll find this on the last page of the press release. <coughs> um, and it, it, for instance, if they would uh, send a voter a communication that purported to be from a Board of Elections, for instance, to tell them that the election day is a different day than what it is on November 4th, uh, that would be uh, punishable as a criminal, uh, criminal offense. So what we've done is we have supplied the Boards of Elections with a complete set um, of the Ch Title 3599 revised code that sets forth generally the um, election law violations to remind them to be on the lookout for these types of things. Uh, because what we want to do is, is to run a fair election process and to protect the integrity of the process. 